ya katika ushirika ndani ya kanisa oh, actually our missionaries uh, came back from korea ya yeah, mm. hakika wa missionary wetu wameza kutoka katika nji ya korea and also our senior pastor is uh, arriving tomorrow na hata mchungaji mkuu atawasili hapa kesho and so we are here but we have hope for tomorrow so kwa hivyo tuko hapa uh, kwa niapa yake i mean tomorrow is better than today so inamaanisha hata kesho ni bora kushinda siku ya leo okay. let's read the bible so kwa hivyo tusome biblia yeah the book of first samuel chapter uh, 30 from verse 1 to 20 ya kitabu ni cha samueli wa kwanza sura ni wa 30 mustari ni wa 20 hadi 30 yeah because of time we just read in english yeah kwa sababu ya wakati tutasoma tu kwa kiingereza and it came to pass when david and his men were come to ziklag on the third day that the amalekites had invaded the south and uh, ziklag and smitten ziklag and burned it with fire and uh, had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way uh, so david and his men came uh, to the city and behold it was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives then david and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep and uh, david's two wives were taken captives Ahinoam the Jezreelites and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelites and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God and David said to Abiathar the priest Ahimelech's sons I pray thee uh, bring me hither the ephod and the other brought uh, the uh, the effort to david and david inquired at the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and he answered him pursue for thou uh, shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all and so david went he and his 600 men that were with him and came to the brook bezo where those that were left behind stayed but david pursued he and 400 men for 200 aboard behind which were so faint that they could not go over the brook bezo and uh, they found an egyptian uh, in the field and brought him to david and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread no drunk any water three days and three nights and uh, david said unto him uh, to whom uh, belongest thou and whence art thou and he said i'm a young man of egypt a servant to an amalekite and my master left me uh, because three days are gone i fell sick we made an invasion upon the south of the uh, cherathites and upon the coast which belongs to Judah and upon the south of uh, Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire and David said to him canst thou bring me down to this uh, company and he said swear unto me by God that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master and I will bring thee down to uh, this company and when he had uh, brought him down Uh, behold they were spread abroad upon all the earth eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah and David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day and uh, they are escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled and david recovered all that the malekites had carried away and david rescued his two wives and there was nothing lacking to them neither small nor great neither sons nor daughters neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them david recovered all 
And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drove before those uh, other cattle and says this is David's to, uh, spoil. We have read until verse 20. Tumesoma mbaka mstari wa 20. Recently I began to check and uh, inspect my heart. Uh, so hivi machusi nikawa na chungusa ndani ya moyo wangu. As you know uh, the Bible says, chinzi mnavoelewa maandiko inasema hivi. No. Examine, examine yourself. Yeah, and so I was uh, checking my heart. So nalikuwa moyo wangu. Yes, I know the word. Yeah, ukweli ni kwamba najua hili neno. I read the word of God and I preach the word of God. But uh, sometimes I feel like the word I know is vague in my mind. And when you know something vaguely, you are, you don't, uh, you are not different from the person who does not know anything whatsoever. Yes, I know, but I know vaguely. Yes, I may say I know spiritual life. But what I know is really vague. I may say I know God. But the God I know is very vague in my mind even. So what am I supposed to do? I should know correctly and I should know precisely. There is no why people People don't believe in God. It's because they don't know God truly. They don't know God correctly. Yeah, but then, if I really know God and I know myself, then to belong to God and to believe in God becomes so easy. But because I don't know God or I know God vaguely, yeah, it's not easy for me to have true faith faith to believe in God correctly. So haikuangi ni raisi kwa mimi kukuwa na imani na kumuamini mungu. Yeah, this last week I visited a funeral home. Yeah, so wiki uliopita nilitembelea nyumba ambao kuna matanga. Yeah, in this home they are mourning the, the loss of uh, a mother. Na kwa hii familia walikuwa na omboleza kwa achili ya kumpoteza mama wao. Yeah, and then uh, as uh, I was sharing the word of God with them na wakati nilipo kwa na shiriki neno la mungu pamoja nao. There's something that is, uh, should be clearly you know, arranged in our hearts. So, yeah, which God do you believe in? Awe, mungu gani. Do you believe in God who has washed away all your sins? Yeah. Or do you believe in God who is washing you on daily basis? Yeah. Do you believe in God who is washing your sins when you ask for forgiveness? Or you believe in him who has washed you once and for all? Yeah. Anawasha dhambi zako unapomba msamaa ama unamwamini Mungu aliosha dhambi zako mara moja milele. What the Bible says so Biblia inasema hivi is that he sanctified us once and for all. Ya kwamba alitutakaza mara moja milele. What the Bible says na chinzi ambapo maandiko inanena is that God perfected us forever. Ya kwamba huyo Mungu alitutakaza na akatukamilisha milele. What the Bible says na chenye Biblia inasema is that God has said he will not remember our sins and lawless deeds anymore. Ya kwamba Mungu amesema ya kwamba hata kumbuka dhambi zetu na wazi wetu hata milele. Yes, when you read the Roman chapter 3 verse 23 and 24. Unaposoma kitabu cha Warumi sura ni wa 3 mstari wa 23 na 24. Verse 23 said all have sinned. Ya mstari ni wa 23 maandiko inasema wote wametenda dhambi. And fell short of the glory of God. Na wamepungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. This is this is true. Ya ni ukweli. But in as much as this is true, Lakini kadri hini ya ukweli, yeah, verse 24 is even true. Hata mustari wa ishirini ya ukweli hata saidi. So verse 23 say, for says we are justified freely. Ya shina ine kwa sabu wanaesapia wana, wana kuwa wenye haki bure. Yes, here we have the word grace, justified freely by grace. Ya hapa kuna nena 
kupitia neema wanahesabika kuwa wenye haki bure kwa neema Yes our redemption has been accomplished already Ya ukombozi wetu ushatimilika tayari Even though it's accomplished Ya hata ingawa umeweza kukamilika And everything has been done by grace Na kila kitu imeweza kufanyika kupitia neema God really wanted to bestow grace upon every single human being Ah Mungu angetamani kupeana neema kwa kila mwanadamu Yeah but there's something that cannot happen in my life as long as I don't have the faith to believe in these words. Lakini kuna kitu ambao hauwezi kufanyika kwa maisha yangu wakati ambao sina imani juu ya hili neema. Yes, grace is there given already. Ya ukweli ni kwamba neema ushapeana tayari. Why do I believe in this say do, do I have faith to believe in the grace of God? Lakini je nina imani ya kuamini hili neno? God says, Na Mungu anasema hivi. I've justified you freely by grace. Nimekuweza pia kuwa wewe ni mwenye haki kwa neema. But those who don't have faith to believe in this word, lakini wala amba hawana imani kwa kuamini hili neno. Yes, indeed they cannot nullify the word of God. Ukweli ni kwamba hawezi wakalifuta hili neno la Mungu. But themselves they remain as sinners lakini wao wenyewe wanasaliwa wakiwa ni wenye dhambi. Yes the word of God remains true. So neno la Mungu linasalia kwa ni la ukweli. And so the Bible says let God be true by every man a liar. Biblia inasema ya kwamba wacha Mungu akuwe ni wa ukweli na kila mwanadamu akuwe ni muongo. So as we move around here and share the word of God with people. So tunapotembea hapa na pale na kushiriki neno la Mungu na watu. Something that is amazingly realized is that people don't believe in the word of God or they believe in the word of God vaguely. Ya chambo la kushangaza ni kwamba watu wengi hawaamini hili neno la Mungu ama wanaliamini kichuju even if it's a machine na hata kama ni mashine if you don't know it uh, very well precisely uh, kama hauja pata ufahamu vizuri chinzi ya kutumia and you are trying to use it na unajaribu kuvitumia you end up spoiling the machine uh, una budi la tu kuliharibu mashine hilo but as we think about our spiritual life so tunapofikiria kuhusu maisha yetu ya roho as we think about the faith that we have to believe in god na tunapofikiria kuhusu ibani ambayo tuko nayo juu ya kumwamini mungu is it precise is it correct or is something very vague in us. Ni, ni, ni imani ambao uko na uhakika ama ni imani ya kichuju katika maisha yetu. So as I have the correct faith, so napokuwa na imani ambao ni sawa, surely the work of God has to be manifested in my life. Hakika kazi ya Mungu hauna budi la tukudhirika katika maisha yangu. Having the faith to believe in God correctly is very important. So unapokuwa na imani ya kuamini na Mungu kwa njia uliyomwafaka ni ya muhimu. Baba most of the people in their spiritual life. Lakini miongo mwa watu wengi katika maisha yao ya rohoni not only me but I was able to check also in the lives of so many people na sio tu mimi pinafsi lakini nilichunguza kwa maisha ya watu wengi they believe in god who actually is vague in their hearts wanamwamini mungu ambao ni mungu wa kichuju katika maisha yao yes they say they have the promise of god hakika uh, wanasema wako na hadi la mungu but even this promise of god is vague in their hearts lakini hadi la mungu ni uh, ni hadi ya kichuju katika kama maisha yao. And so if the word of God settles in my heart correctly, yeah, so wakati neno la Mungu linaposimamishwa ndani ya moyo wangu kwa njia uliyomwafaka, then the, wa- the works of God will be revealed in my life. So kazi ya Mungu utadhirika katika maisha yangu. Uh, one time I was uh, uh, preaching in the prison. Uh, so kuna wakati mmoja nilikuwa nahubiri gerezani. And then uh, before I preached that these uh, inmates were singing. Na kabla sijahubiri hao wafungo walikuwa naimba. And now they were singing one song. Na wakawa naimba wimbo moja. Uh, you know that is found in the Bible also. Uh, wimbo ambao ume patikana ndani ya Biblia. But now they are singing in a twisted manner. Lakini wanaimba kwa njia ambayo ni kama umepindika. You know they are saying God give us the key ya wanaomba hivi ya kwamba Mungu tupatie funguo. Ya yeah, give us the key. Ya tupatie ufunguo. But then when after they have sung and they sat down, na baada ya kuimba na kuweza kuketi chini, I met one of them. Nikawa nimekutana na mmoja wao. No, eh hey, Eugene you are saying that God should give you the key. Ah uh, Eugene unasema ya kwamba Mungu awapatie ufunguo. But actually what the Bible says precisely, lakini Biblia inaelezea wasi wasi, is that God has given us the key. Ya kwamba Mungu ametupatia ufunguo. Do you believe God has given you the key or you believe God should is holding the key still? Je, unaamini ya kwamba Mungu ametupatia ufunguo ama bado unaamini ya kwamba Mungu ameshikilia ufunguo? The key for our sin problem 
them. Ya ufunguo kwa achili ya zamizetu. The key for our difficulties. Ufunguo kwa achili ya hali magumu kwa maisha yetu. The key for our challenges that we are faced with in our lives. Ufunguo kwa achili ya hali ngumu ambao tunapitia kwa maisha. That key, who has it? Ya ufunguo huo nani ya konayo? Does God have it? God has it or I have it. Che, mungu wako na ufunguo ama mimi niko na ufunguo. You know when you have the key, unapokuwa na ufunguo, no matter how the door could be locked. Haijalishi mlango umefungwa kiasi gani. If you have the key then there's no problem. Unapokuwa na ufunguo hauna shida. God anytime you can go and you can open. Kwa sababu wakati wote unaweza kwenda pale na kuweza kuufungua. But now when you are faced with it difficulties lakini unapokumbana na hali it's completely locked there's no way whatsoever unapoangalia kila mahali kumefungwa hakuna matumaini unapoangalia it's, it's not possible for you to go through it uh, unapoangalia ni kama hakuna matumaini ya wewe kuweza kupitia hapo so now we start to ask god please give me the key uh, so wakati huo unaanza kumwambia mungu nipatie ufunguo but what god says is the opposite lakini chenye mungu anasema ni kinyume now that you are born again na kwa hivyo umesaliwa mara ya pili god says that has given us the key. Aso Mungu anasema kwamba ametupatia ufunguo. In the book of Matthew chapter 18, ya kwa kitabu cha Mathayo 18. Yeah, the Bible says, maandiko inanena hivi. Uh, in Matthew chapter 18, ya Mathayo mtakatifu 18. Yeah, verse 18 says, Ukisoma mstari wa 18 unasema hivi. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amin na wambieni yoyote mtakayofunga duniani yatakuwa yamefungwa mbinguni na yoyote mtakayofungua duniani yatakuwa yamefunguliwa mbinguni. And again I send to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven. Tena nawaambia ya kwamba wawili wenu watakapopatana duniani katika chambo lolote watakaloliomba watafanyiwa na baba yangu aliye mbinguni. For where two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them. Ya kwa kuwa walipo wawili wawili watatu wamekusanyika kwa china langu nami nipo papo hapo katikati yao. Yeah, the Bible says that it has to be loosed where first of all. Yeah, so maandiko inasema inastahili kufunguliwa wapi mara ya kwanza. So when I send to you that you sh, uh, you know whatsoever you shall bind on earth. Yeah, so amina nawaambieni yoyote mtakayofunga duniani. Is there something that is bound in my life? Yeah, so kama kuna kitu ambacho imefungwa kwa maisha yangu. Is there something that is not working out very well in my life? Na kama kuna kitu ambacho haifanyi kazi vizuri kwa maisha yangu. It's bound where? So imefungwa wapi? Is it here? Is it there? Je, imefungwa hapa ama imefungwa pale? Yeah, the Bible says So Biblia inanena hivi. Whatever you bound on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Chochote ambacho imefungwa duniani itafungwa mbinguni. Whatever is bound in your heart. Na chochote ambacho imefungwa ndani ya moyo wangu. It's already bound in heaven as well. Inamaanisha hata mbinguni imefungwa hivyo. What does that mean? So inamaanisha nini? For God to be able to work in our lives. Ili Mungu akaweze kufanya kazi kwa maisha yetu. To see whether there's accurate faith in my heart. So, Mungu anatasamia kama kweli kuna imani uliyo sawa ndani ya moyo wangu. Whether I believe in his promise correctly. Na kama kweli unaliamini ahadi zake kwa njia uliyomwafaka. The promise I believe in my heart. Na ahadi ambayo naliamini ndani ya moyo. Will make me free, will make everything to be loose. Ah uh, unaweza kuniweka huru, unaweza kunifungua. But when I still hold this in my heart. Lakini wakati ambao nachifunga ndani ya moyo wangu. When I'm still bound in by binding this thing in my heart na wakati ambao nimefungwa na vitu hivyo ndani ya moyo wangu there won't be peace there won't be any there won't be rest whatsoever in the situation that i'm faced with so unamaanisha kwamba hakutakuwa na amani hatakuwa hakutakuwa na furaha hakutakuwa na chochote ndani ya maisha yangu then i'm waiting upon god na wakati huo namngojea bwana like those inmates there right na haileti hata maana ah god give me the key ah mungu nipatie ufunguo god i'm asking the key ah mungu naomba ufunguo god is saying no i've given you the key na Mungu anasema hapana nishakupatia ufunguo. And whatever you are binding on earth. Na yoyote mtakayofunga duniani. It's bound in heaven. Ya itafungwa mbinguni. But when you lose it on earth. Lakini wakati ambao mta 
atakayofungua duniani yatakuwa yamefunguliwa mbinguni once you lose it on the earth so inamaanisha unapofungua hapa ulimwenguni already discover that it was already loosed even in heaven so utatamboya kwamba tayari ulikuwa umefunguliwa hata mbinguni you know as um, Sometimes I say like this. Ya kuna mara mingi nasema hivi. Yeah, faith life is like uh, you know, you are faced you are in front of an automatic door. Ya maisha ya imani ni kama unasimama mbele ya mlango ambao inafunguka uh, kwa njia ya automatic. I don't know whether you've gone into those buildings where the door is opened automatically yeah. as you come closer. Sijui kama mshatembelea mahali ambapo mlango sinafunguka automatic unaposimama mbele zao. Yeah, in our compound here. Ya yeah, katika uwaletu hapa there are some automatic lights. Ya yeah, kuna hata taa ambazo ni za automatic. When you come closer unapokaribia switch is on automatically. Ya yeah, taa zinaanza kuangaza yenyewe. Suppose I'm staying uh, at a far distance ah uh, tuseme kwa mfano nimekaa mahali ambapo ni mbali kidogo and i'm praying continuously na ninaomba kuendelea please god put on the light it's very dark ah, mungu tafadhali utupatie mwangaza kuna kiza hapa yeah I put, you know i want this light to be switched on ya yeah, nataka taa hizi sifunguke sasa god will say what ya yeah, mungu atasema nini why don't you come closer and see whether the light will not go on ya yeah, kwa nini usinikaribie na ukaweze kuona kama taa ziko wazi ama zimefungwa yeah, there is an automatic door in front of me ya yeah, kuna mlango ambao unafunguka kwa njia automatic rather than me moving towards it and uh, stand before it so that that it may open so badala ya mimi kuweza kukaribia na kuweza kuona ikiwa imefunguka yeah, i'm saying fire and i'm praying honestly so nakaa mbali na naomba kwa moyo ulio wa kipekee and i'm praying zealously na ninaomba na juhudi but where am i i'm very far lakini mahali ambapo nipo niko mbali that door will never open na mlango huo hauwezi kufunguka and i may end up saying oh, god is not hearing my prayer na hatimaye nitapata ya kwamba mungu hajasikia ombi langu god says no no just come closer to it lakini mungu anasema ukaribie mlango huu it will be opened au ukikaribia itafunguka you lose it in your heart ya ukiweza kufungua ndani ya moyo wako and it's going to be lost in heaven as well itafunguliwa mbinguni hata hivyo the bible is telling us here na so chenye biblia inatueleza hapa ni so when to or three are gather in my name ya wakati wawili ama watatu wameku kusanyika kwa china la Mungu. Yeah, I'm in the midst of them. Ya yeah, nipo katikati yao. I'm in the midst of them to work for them. Niko katikati yao niweze kuwatendea kazi. Yes, that's why the church is very important. Bosa tunasema kanisa ni la muhimu. That's why I have to agree and accept the authority of the church to rule over me. Na kwa hivyo tunastahili kukupali na kuamini mamlaka ya kanisa kuniweza kunitawala. When I remain under the authority of the church. Ya yeah, wakati ambao nakaa chini ya mamlaka ya kanisa. The blessings of the church will indeed overflow in my life as well. Una maanisha kwamba baraka za kanisa utakuwa juu ya maisha yangu hata hivyo. It's not that God has to lose it first of all. Na si eti ya kwamba Mungu anastahili afungue kwanza. It has to be loosed in my heart first of all. Una staili kuanza kufunguliwa ndani ya moyo wangu kwanza. And then heaven is going to be open indeed. Na mbinguni utafungukwa hata hivyo. That, that is uh, you know what you have to realize. So jambo hilo una staili kulifahamu hivyo. Do we pray honestly? Ya ngawache unaweza kuomba kwa juhudi. You have to realize that all the matters in my heart. Ya unastahili kutambua kwamba mambo yote ambayo yako ndani ya moyo wangu they have to be loosed from ya, my heart first of all. Ya unastahili kufunguliwa kwanza ndani ya moyo wangu. But then how can they be loosed in my heart? Na yanaweza kufunguliwa aje ndani ya moyo wangu. By the word of the promise. Ni kupitia tu neno la ahadi. By what everyone? Na kupitia nini kila mmoja wetu by the word of the promise ni kupitia neno la ahadi when the word of the promise comes in your heart so wakati neno la ahadi limeweza kuingia ndani ya moyo wako it's able to open to make loose everything that was burdensome in your life ya yeah, ina uwezo wa kufungua kila kitu ambao ulikuwa umefungwa ndani ya maisha yako but this is only possible if you believe in the promise lakini chambo hili lina uwezekano tu wakati ambao unaamini hili ahadi in the book of first samuel chapter 1 ya yeah, katika kitabu cha samueli wa kwanza sura ni 
wa kwanza. The Bible speaks about this one man who was having two wives. Ya Biblia inanena kuhusu huyu mtu mmoja aliyekuwa na wake wawili. And one is Hana, the other one is Penina. Na mmoja wao ni Hana na mwingine ni Penina. Penina has got a very big problem. Na Penina I mean, akawa na shida kubwa. Hana has got even a bigger problem. Na hata Hana ako na shida kubwa zaidi. The Bible says Hana was barren. Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba Hana alikuwa ni taza. Actually being barren in the land of Israel. Ya kukua taza katika taifa la Israeli. No, that means she is under a curse. Ya unamaanisha kwamba alikuwa chini ya laana. She is under a curse. She cannot do anything to remove the curse she is under. Na kama hako chini ya laana, hana budi ya kufanya chochote kuondoa laana. In that kind of situation. Na katika hali kama hiyo. She has Elkanah who is comforting her continuously. Alikuwa na Elkanah mba alikuwa na mfariti mara kwa mara. Oh, Hannah, don't worry. Hana usijali. I will give you a worthy portion. Ya, nitakupatia sehemu ambayo inakufaa. Hey, Hana, don't worry. Ya, so kwa hivyo, Hana, usikuwe na wasiwasi. Don't even weep. Hata usitoe machonzi. I'm better to you than ten sons. Ya, mimi niko pora kushinda hata wana marakumi. So, Elkanah would speak nicely and Na, comfort her. Uh, wakatu Elkanah kawa na mwangelesha maneno matamu kiasi hicho. But there's Penina on the other side. Lakini kuna huyu Penina upanda ule mwingine. The Bible says Penina would provoke her all the time. Na Biblia inasema kwamba Penina alikuwa ni kama anam anamchokoza mara kwa mara you know whatever it is na haijalishi ni hali aina gani uliopo that those are the words of comfort from elkana ya haijalishi kama ni maneno ya elkana ya kumfariti or the words to make her to fret coming from penina ama maneno ya kumfanya aisi ya kwamba amekasirika kutoka kwa penina nothing can make the problem that hana no, has in her to be loosed. Ya, hakuna chamba amba linaiza kufanya, hata shida amba hana hako na ayo ndani ya mwewake kufunguliwa. Why? Because Elkana is a human being. Penina also, she is a human being. Ni kwa nini, ni kwa sabwa Elkana ni manadamu, kama Penina chinsa alivo ni manadamu. But Hana continuously had a problem in her heart. Lakini kila wakati Hana alikuwa na shida ndani ya mwewake. But eventually she is able to stand before the man of God. Lakini hati mai alipata fursa ya kusimama mbele ya mtumishi wa mungu. She was able to stand before Eli. Na akawa mesimama mbele za Eli. Eli was the servant of God. Na Eli akawa ni mtumishi wa mungu. When he looked at this woman called Hana. Na wakati alipo muangalia hui mwanamuka ambaya naitua Hana. She looked as if she looked as if she was drunk. Na akaonekana ni kama amelewa. You are drunk a woman. Ya we ni mwanamuke ambaya amelewa. Come out from your drunkenness. Ukaeze kutoka katika ulevi wako. That was the early. Ya, hivyo nivyo early alikuwa na muona. But now, you know, Hannah is explaining. Lakini hapa, Anna anaelezea. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Ya, ukiangalia Samuel wa kwanza, sura ni wa kwanza. Ya, Hannah is explaining what kind of life she's been going through. Ya, so hapa, Hannah anaelezea chinsa mbavo amepitia kwa maisha. So when, you know, the Bible says on verse uh, 10. Ya, ukiangalia Biblia inasema hivi kwa mustari wa kumi. And she was in the bitterness of sore and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Ya, alikuwa katika machungu na kawa analia. And uh, verse uh, 12, it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And then he said unto her, and how long will thou be drunk and put away thine wine, thy wine from thee? And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I've, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I've drunk and neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Now we can see Hannah is pouring her soul before the Lord. Yeah, so ukiangalia hapa, Hannah anamwaga mwe wake mbele za buwana. I'm not a drunkard woman. Mimi si yule manamuke alie ni mlevi. Don't count me as a daughter of Bilyol. Usi ni esabu ni kama ni pinti wa ipilisi. I'm speaking my my grievances before the Lord. Na mwaga halizangu zote mbele za mungu. And actually... When she was standing before the man of God, Eli, she was able to receive the promise of God. And so Eli says on verse 17, Hey, go in peace. 
ya ukainene na amani and god of israel granted thee thy petition that thou has asked of him na mungu wa israeli akuchalie hacha yako uliyoomba ah god will grant thy petition a mungu akuchalie yale yote ambayo umemwomba god will answer your prayer ya mungu atachibu maombi yako now she is before the promise of god kwa hivyo amesema mbele za hadi za mungu how will we know that the things that were holding her heart are going to be loosed so unatambuache ya kwamba hali ambayo silikuwa simefungwa ndani ya moyo wake unaweza kufunguliwa in verse 18 the bible says na mstari wa 18 biblia inanena hivi and she said let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight so the woman went her way and did eat and her countenance was no more sad na biblia inasema naye akasema mchakazi wako na aone kipale machoni pako basi huyo mwanamke akaenda sake na naye akala akala chakula wala uso wake haukukunjamana tena now her steps has taken her back home yeah, so wakati huo nyao zake zimemwongoza kuelekea nyumbani the bible says she's eating well so biblia inasema anakula vizuri the bible says her countenance was no more sad na biblia inasema ya kwamba uso wake haukukunjamana tena what does this mean so unamaanisha nini she doesn't have a child yet inamaanisha hata ingawa hachapata mtoto but already Samuel is born from her heart lakini kwa hakika Samuel amesaliwa ndani ya moyo wake do you understand unaelewa hivyo Samuel is already born in her heart before he was born physically so inamaanisha Samuel tayari amesaliwa ndani ya moyo wake kabla hajasaliwa kwa nje now we know it's already loosed in her heart so inamaanisha kwamba ndani ya moyo wake amefunguliwa now that it, this is loosed through the promise of the servant of god na kwa sababu amefunguliwa kupitia hadi ya tumishi wa Mungu na it's going to be lost in heaven or not na itakuwa imefunguliwa mbinguni ama si hivyo it has to be opened right so inastahili kufunguliwa sivyo cuz this is something it's like a rule of the spiritual life ya tunasema ya kwamba hii ni sharti katika maisha ya rohoni ya all the time she was crying wakati wote alikuwa analia all the time she could not even eat food na hata wakati wote hangeweza kukula chakula But something that is amazing lakini chamba ambalo linafurahisha hapa ana now is able to meet with the promise of god in her life ya huyo ana ana uwezo wa kukutana na hadi ya mungu katika maisha yake whether it's hana or even it's abraham so haijalishi kama ni hana ama ibrahimu you know all the time it has to be loosed on the earth and then it can be loosed in heaven as so, well kila wakati unastahili kufunguliwa ndani ya moyo na kwa hivyo utafunguliwa mbinguni you know as long as hana was binding the things from her heart ya mradi hana alikuwa amefungwa na mambo mengi ndani ya moyo wake no, there's no way she can meet with the promise of god in her life there's no way she can she can see samuel being born so hakuna njia ambapo anaweza kukutana na hadi ya mungu na hakuna chinsa ambapo samueli anaweza saliwa kwa maisha yake when it is uh, still bound in her heart so wakati ambao hata dhambi unakuwa ndani ya moyo she can talk to elkana anaweza kumongelesha elkana oh don't worry my my wife my beloved wife ah mke wangu mpenzi usi usichali hey you know always sometimes she's fighting back with penina ya pengine wanaweza hata kupishana na pen- Nina she's complaining about her situation na analalamika kuhusiana na hali zake she's so full she doesn't eat ana anafadaika na hata hawezi kukula and she's very bitter in her heart na ndani ya moyo wake anapepana na uchungu you know All these people that are spoken about in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. So how watu wote ambao wamenenwa katika kitabu cha Samueli sura ni wa kwanza. Yes they are Christians. Ya ukweli ni kwamba ni wa Kristo. Kana is a Christian. Ya Elkana ni Mkristo. Penina is a Christian as well. Ya Penina ni Mkristo hata hivyo. You know but something that we have to keep in mind. Lakini chambo ambao unastahili kulifahamu ndani ya moyo wako ni. Only Hannah was able to meet with the promise of God in her life. Ni Hannah peke yake aliweza kukutana na hadi ya Mungu ndani ya maisha yake. And when Hannah met with the promise of God in her life. Na wakati Hannah amekutana na hadi ya Mungu ndani ya maisha yake. The things that were loosed in her, were bound in her heart. Na mambo ambayo yalikuwa yamefungwa ndani ya moyo wake. Now they are loosed. Mambo hayo yakawa yamefunguliwa. So that have to ask the key from God. Asieti ya kwamba tu astahili kuomba ufunguo kutoka kwa Mungu. God says I've given you the key. Mungu anasema tayari nishakupatia ufunguo. And then one time our pastor was speaking from this podium. Na kuna wakati ambao mchungaji akawa anaongea katika chukua hili. And he said the key was what? Na akasema ufunguo ni nini? Said the key was what? Akasema ufunguo ni nini? Awa 
akasema ufunguo ni nini our lips ah, ufunguo ni midomo zetu you speak the word of the promise ah, unastahili kulinena hili neno la ahadi as you believe it from your heart as well na unapoliamini ndani ya moyo wako hata hivyo this is something that is very amazing chambo hili ni nakuwa ni chambo la kushangaza i mean there are two things that you can understand ya, kuna vitu viwili ambavyo unakosa kuelewa when the holy spirit of god is at work you ni, may not understand well wakati ambao roho wa mungu unatenda kazi unayakosa kuelewa Also when the spirit of Satan is working you may not understand it very well. Na wakati ambao roho chafu wa shetani unapotenda kazi unakosa kuelewa. So most of the time people are dragged by the evil spirit of Satan. So kuna mara mingi watu wanafurutwa na uh, roho wa shetani. So they speak the situation na kwa sababu ya hali. They speak the circumstances. Na wananena hali katika maisha they maisha yao. They speak about their problems. Na wanaanza kunena kuhusu matatizo yao. And they don't have the promise of God in their hearts. Na wakati wao hawana ahadi la Mungu ndani ya mioyo zao. That's why they are bound continuously. So wanakuwa watu ambao wamefungwa siku baada ya siku. And they are praying God please me the, give me the key. Na wanaanza kuomba Mungu tafadhali nipatie ufunguo. It's not that we have to pray for the key. We have the key already. Na si eti ya kwamba tunastahili kuomba kwa ajili ya ufunguo. Tayari tuko na ufunguo. We have the key because we are God's children. Ya tuko na ufunguo kwa sababu tumefanyika kuwa watoto wa Mungu. We have the key tuko na ufunguo and god gives us this promise na mungu anatupatia ahadi hili i will be their god they shall be my people nao nami nitakuwa mungu wao nao watakuwa watu wangu who are we whom do we belong to ya, sisi tunamilikiwa na nani sisi ni kina nani who's our master who's our shepherd ya kuna bwana aliye ni mchungaji wetu who is our custodian ya ni nani ambaye ni mwangalizi I mean, wetu i don't belong to myself ya mimi sio wa mimi mwenyewe because god said you are mine ni kwa sababu Mungu anasema wewe ni wangu even my own things i keep them and protect them because they belong to me hata na vitu vyangu na viweka na vivadhi ni kwa sababu ni vyangu do you just mismanage your things je una unavitavanya vitu vyako you just take your phone and throw away wherever you know wherever you want je unachukua simu yako unatapanya kila mahali You keep and protect because that belongs to you. Unahifadhi na unaweka vizuri ni kwa sababu ni chako. But people believe that God really has become our master. Lakini watu wanaamini uh, ya kwamba waamini ya kwamba Mungu amefanyika kwa bwana wetu kwa maisha yetu. When Naomi was, I mean when uh, Hannah was able to accept the one that come came from the man of god eli uh, so wakati hana ameza kuamini neno ambao limetoka kwa kinywa cha mtumishi wa mungu aliye ni eli when the man of god said may the lord god of israel grant thy petition wakati mtumishi wa mungu alisema kwamba na mungu wa israeli akuchalie yale yote ambao umemwomba kwake this word of the promise so hili neno ambalo ni la ahadi was able to make her heart lose ha uh, uliweza kufanya moyo wake kukua umefunguka that's why she can only you know be happy again so kwa hivyo hana budi la tu kukua mama ambaye amechawa na furaha tena oh i have samuel ah nina huyu samuel what is your samuel ya samuel wako hako wapi my samuel is in the promise that i have received from the servant of god samuel wangu amefichwa ndani ya ahadi la mungu ambao umepeanwa na mungu and from that time on was after she received the promise the word of the promise na kuanzia wakati huo na kuendelea baada ya kupokea ahadi la mungu god be comes responsible to accomplish the promise that he has given. Mungu akawa ni yule ambaye anahakikisha kwamba hilo ahadi limetimika. Yeah in the book of Romans chapter 4 kwa kitabu cha Warumi sura ni waine. We have the story about Abraham as well. Kuna haditi kuhusu Ibrahim hata hivyo. Abraham is receiving the promise as well. Yeah so hapa Ibrahim anapokea ahadi hata hivyo. Yes God spoke to him in Genesis chapter 12. Mungu alinena na yeye kitabu katika kitabu cha mwanzo 12. But uh, when you see him throughout chapter 13 chapter 14 chapter 15 of the book of genesis ukimwangalia katika uh, sura wa 13 sura wa 14 suri wa sura wa 15 katika kitabu cha mwanzo ya yeah, abraham is like staggering in faith uh, unaona ya kwamba ibrahim ana sita sita katika maisha ya imani but this roman chapter 4 verse 19 says lakini ukiangalia warumi sura na waine mstari ni wa 17 unasema hivi and uh, being not weak in faith ya haku uh, hakuregea katika imani okay, let me just read in english from verse 19 up to verse uh, 21 
And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able so to perform. This is very important. So, chambo hili ni la muhimu sana. Now, when he's fully persuaded that what he has promised is also able to perform. So, wakati amba amesha wishika ya kwamba yula ambaye aliaidi anawezo wa kutimiza. Is it loose? Is it bound? Che, imefunguliwa ama imefungwa. In the heart of Abraham. So, ndani ya Ibrahimu. Many times. So, kuna maramingi. Abraham was uh, having these issues, you know, bound in his heart. Ibrahimu alikuwa na hali ambao simefungwa ndani. Why is it bound in his heart? He's looking at himself. Look at Abraham. Look at Sarah. Who are we? We are just old people here. We cannot have a child even if we wanted to have a child. We are back and forth in faith. But here the Bible the Bible says eventually. And being fully persuaded. No, that what he has promised he was able also to perform. Is this, uh, you know, bound? Is this loose? He has already, everything is loose now. So inamanisha kila kitu kimefunguliwa sa. When he was able to reach at this point, it's no longer about his condition and circumstances. It's not that the womb of Sarah is dead. It's not that we are old people, we cannot do anything here. His focus had already changed. His focus was only on the promise of God. He's fully persuaded. Yeah, you know, even though I'm old, it's not a problem. He was, has promised. He's more than able to accomplish that which he promised. Ah, God is not a liar. You know, there are many people outside here. They believe in a God who seems to be a liar. So one time I was uh, in a fellowship. And somebody, you know, from the congregation rose up his hand to ask the pastor a so, question. This is uh, somebody who did not have a child even though he had been married for some years. And then he's asking a question. So, oh, pastor, I think God lied to me. Can God lie? Can God lie? No. <laughs> but he's saying God lied to me. Hey, so what do you mean God lied to you? Hey, speak out, tell us. Uh, God promised me a child, now I have no child yet. The pastor gave the answer right away. Hey, that, that's the kind of faith that you have in your heart. You didn't believe in God to begin with. How could you even think that God is a liar? The Bible says God who cannot lie. Did he promise? Then surely he's going to fulfill according to what he promised. So this word of the promise that we receive in our hearts, 
tokea ndani ya mioyo zetu when it's no longer something that is very vague in my heart wakati neno hilo inafanyika kuwa sio neno ambao ni ya kichujuu kwa maisha yetu fully persuaded ya wakati ambao tumeshawishika ya kutosha that god is more than able to accomplish that which he promised unto us ya kwamba mungu ana uwezo wa kutimiza yale yote ambayo ametuahidia that's the point when it is loose in our heart hiyo ni kiwango ambacho mungu atafungua chochote ambayo imefungwa ndani ya mioyo zetu and from that time on was god is able to work na kuanzia wakati huo mungu ana uwezo wa kufanya kazi kwa yeah, maisha this is a very correct rule in the bible uh, so tunasema hiyo ni sharti ambayo imewekwa ndani ya biblia you know it's correct as uh, as as the sun rising every morning yeah ni ni sawa kabisa chinza ambavyo jua linapotua asubuhi but most of the people na watu wengi because they despise the promise of god ni kwa sababu wanaudharau ahadi ya mungu neither do they receive salvation or do the right spiritual life na kwa sababu hawachapokea uokovu ama kuishi maisha ya rohoni uliyo sawa and so even though god prepared grace for us ngawache mungu ameweza kutupatia neema kwa ajili yetu we want to bestow everything through the means of grace ngawache mungu anataka kupeana kila kitu kupitia njia ya neema but if we don't have faith in our hearts lakini tunapokoza kuwa na imani ndani ya mioyo zetu then that faith becomes you know that grace that god prepared for us cannot be our grace so imani ambayo mungu ame ndani ya mioyo zetu haiwezi kukuwa ni neema no david the bible says was a man after the heart of god daudi maandiko inanena ya kwamba alikuwa ni mtu ambaye moyo wake ulikuwa unafanana na moyo wa mungu no there is something amazing here in the book of first samuel chapter 30 ya kuna chambo la kushangaza hapa kwa samueli wa kwanza sura ni wa 30 david meets a very big problem ya hapa daudi amekuumbana na hali kubwa kwa maisha yake but also in chapter 31 na hata katika sura wa 31 Saul also meets a big problem. Sauli hata na yeye amekumbana na hali kubwa katika maisha yake. How did they behave before these problems that they are faced with? Lakini wote waliweza kuishi namna gani mbele za hali ambazo walikumbana nazo? The man who has God and the man who does not have God, how do they behave before the difficulties in their lives? Ya yule mtu ambaye hako na Mungu na yule mtu ambaye hana Mungu wakati wanakumbana na hali wanaishi so aache mbele za Mungu. So David is meeting with this problem wakati Daudi anapokutana na hali yes, the bible says he was crying and did not have any more tears to weep ya biblia inasema kwamba Daudi akawa analia mpaka hata ameshindwa kulia people are saying that they should stone David watu wakawa na nena ya kwamba tunastahili kumpiga mawe Daudi he is in that situation so, anapatikana katika hali kama hiyo have, ever, have you ever cried after you became a grown up person ache umwai kulia baada ya kufanyika kwa m- mtu ambaye amesaliwa mara ya pili have you ever je umewahi kulia maybe you remember crying when your mother and your father you know were kenning you right ya pengine unakumbua unakumbuka wakati baba yako ama mama yako walikutandika sivyo yes Dio? have you ever cried after you became a grown up person ya Uh, sijawahi kulia baada ya have kufanya cried uh, sijawahi kulia baada ya kukuwa mtu mzima raise up your hand if you ever cried after you become a grown up person unaweza kuinua mkono wako kama hujawahi baada ya kukuwa mtu mzima i mean shawahi <laughs> kulia ama umewahi ume kulia yes yeah, some of you yes hi hi you know ya yeah, kuna wala ambao pengine wamelia kuna wala ambao wachalia but not many times right lakini sio mara mingi sivyo You are faced with a very big problem. Hatuseme kwa mfano umekutana na shida kubwa sana. It's beyond your power. Hauna uwezo wa kutipiti. You cannot uh, try to do anything by yourself. Hauwezi ukafanya chochote wewe pinafsi. And then you cry. So wakati huo unaanza kulia. Maybe if you can remember well kama unakumbuka vizuri the incident that made you to cry ya matatizo ambayo yalikufanya ulie there are not many ya sio matatizo mengi right sivyo but then something that is amazing when you cry what happens at that time so chambo la kushangaza ni wakati ambao unalia ni nini unafanyika wakati huo in that situation even though david was together with 600 men ya wakati huo ingawa daudi alikuwa na watu 600 even they are saying ah, let us kill david uh, by stoning him ya wanasema tumue huyu daudi kwa kumpiga mawe they, they came to that situation na daudi akawa katika hali kama hiyo ya yeah, but then the bible says lakini biblia inasema hivi in verse 
mustari ni wa I think we can read all of us together. One, two, three, go. And, and David was, was greatly, greatly distressed, distressed for the, the people spoke to stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Right? Yes. Now that you have made that difficult situation. Right? Do you end up by crying or do you move to but? Do you end up by being grieved only because of the difficulties you have? Or else you encourage yourself in the Lord your God. And David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. As he encouraging himself in the Lord his God, the Bible says, Biblia inasema hivi, he inquired from God. Kwa mungu. Ah, he began to inquire from God himself. Kulisia kwa mungu. Yes, I have these difficulties. Ah, niko na hali kama hii. But do I have God in my life? Che, nina mungu ndani ya moyo wangu. Yes, I'm faced with this kind of painful situation. But do I have God in my life? Che, nina mungu ndani ya yangu. Can I run towards my God? Che, huyu mungu wangu. So the Bible says, na Biblia inasema hivi. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God and uh, you know David now inquired from the Lord that is verse 8 and David inquired that the Lord saying shall I pass you after this troop shall I overtake them and he answered him pass you for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover it all and David inquired that the Lord saying shall I pass you after this troop shall I overtake them now, now after David has received the promise of God in his life this issue is already loosed in his heart how you follow pass to them now you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all I just follow them so Regardless of any situation and any condition, so haijalishi hali yoyote, haijalishi masharti yoyote. David started to move. Wakati wa Daudi akaanza kuenda. And the Bible says, so David went. Na Biblia inasema Daudi akaenda. Why is he going? Ni kwa nini Daudi anaenda? Yeah, he's going because this is something that is lost in his heart already. Anaenda ni kwa sababu chambo hili tayari shafunguliwa ndani ya moyo wake. Let me go and recover. Yeah, wacha niende nitaregesha. Let me go and overtake them. Wacha niende nitawapata. Nita Let me go and see the preparation of God. Wacha niende nikaone maandalizi ya Bwana. Let me see how God is going to work. Wacha niende nikaone chinzi ambapo Mungu this is the life of those who have believed in the promise of God. As we believe in the promise of God, God is more than able to work in our lives. I follow. You shall surely recover all. You know, whenever you hear the servant of God, Pastor Park, you know, he testifies on how continuously God has been working in his life. And so today I was thinking, how could I be here? How could I stand here? You know, when David followed, so wakati Daudi amemfuata, no, I came to discover how myself also I was able to belong to this place. Niliweza kutambua chinsi nilichipata nimemilikiwa mahali hapa. You know, verse 11 says, ya mstari wa 11 unasema hivi, and they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread. And he did eat, and they made him drink water. Na wakamkuta misiri mafueni wakamleta kwa Daudi na kumbacha kula 
na yakala na wakamba machi ya kunywa ya yeah, to say the truth and uh, frankly speaking in front of you ya yeah, kusema ukweli na kusema wasi mbele zenu i am this egyptian boy <laughs> ya yeah, mimi ni huyu uh, a kijana misiri long time ago after i got salvation ya yeah, samani baada ya kupokea wokovu now i'm in the church wakati huo nikawa ndani ya kanisa i was learning my spiritual life na nikawa nachifunza maisha ya rohoni and somebody happened to ask one of my relatives that was around na kuna mtu ambaye aliuliza mmoja wetu wa jamaa wangu where is so and so wapi fulani wa fulani <laughs> and he said in kiswahili na wakamchibu kwa kiswahili hivi oh aliokotwa <laughs> aliokotwa aliokotwa <laughs> yeah he was picked <laughs> yeah aliokotwa you pick the thing that are lost isn't it uh, unaokota vitu ambavyo vimepotea sivyo is that so sivyo but when i was lost lakini wakati ambao nilikuwa nimepotea i was picked and i was able to belong to david nikawa nimeokotwa na nikawa nimemilikiwa na daudi i was able to belong to the servant of faith pastor park nikawa nimemilikiwa na mtumishi wa mungu mchungaji park why because i was lost ni kwa nini ni kwa sababu nilikuwa nimepotea yeah, this egyptian boy is abandoned so huyu kijana misiri alikuwa ameachwa even his own master forsook him hata bwana wake alikuwa amemwacha you we don't need him we don't need you anymore yeah, wewe hatukuitachi tena you know after they give him something to drink so baada ya kumpatia machi ya kunywa now david is coming to him and asking him questions so wakati wa daudi anamrudia anamuliza maswali for to whom do you belong to ah uh, wewe ni wa nani he said and whence are thou ya yeah, akasema wewe ni wa nani i'm a man of egypt servant of an amalekite and my master left me because Three days ago I fell sick. Ya yeah, mimi ni mocha wa wa meleki na bwana wangu aliniacha baada ya siku tatu Now, wakati nimekonjeka. Now let's think about the situation to be sick. So wacha tuongee kuhusu hali hii ya kukonjeka. And to be abandoned by, by my former master. Na kuachiliwa na bwana wangu wa hapo awali. Is it a curse? Is it a blessing? Je, inakuwa ni lahana ama inakuwa ni baraka? I am sick, I am abandoned. Ya yeah, mimi ni mgonjwa nimeachwa. <laughs> You know is it good is it bad che chambo hili ni nzuri ama ni mbaya Yes without going through this situation so pasipo kupitia hali kama hii you cannot change the master hawezi ukabadilisha bwana I don't know whether you may think about the day you got salvation yourself. Ya sijui kama unaweza fikiria kuhusu siku ambayo uliweza kupokea wokovu wewe mwenyewe. Were you doing well? Che ulikuwa unafanya vizuri? Were you great people? Che mlikuwa watu mashuhuri? How could you belong to this true gospel? Mlimilikiwa na hii kanisa kwa njia ipi? How could you belong to the Jesus Christ himself. Ulimilikiwa na Yesu kwa njia ipi mwenyewe? How could Jesus become your Lord and your Master? Na Yesu alifanyika kuwa Bwana na mwokozi kwa maisha yako namna gani? He didn't come to you when you were doing very well by yourself. Hakukujia wakati ambao ulikuwa unafanya vizuri. He didn't come to you when everything was fine. Hakukupatikana wakati kila kitu ilikuwa inaendelea vizuri kwako. You are sick. Ulikuwa mgonjwa. You are abandoned. Ulikuwa umeachwa. You are hopeless. Ulikuwa hauna matumaini. You are sorrowful. You don't know how to overcome the sorrow that has come to you. Ulikuwa mtu wa mashaka, hujui chinzi ya kutatua mashaka. And then you are abandoned. Na ulikuwa umeachwa hivyo. But then that became a chance for Lak- this man to belong to David. Lakini tunasema chambo hilo lilikuwa ni sharti ama nafasi ya kufanyika wa kumilikiwa na Daudi without being you know, for second so pasipo kuachwa ama kukanwa by our former master ya na bwana wetu wa hapo awali this amalekite who ah. was uh, enslaving this egyptian ah, huyu muameleki ambaye alikuwa ah, anamwongoza huyu kijana is certain ni shetani satan uses us for his own benefits ah, so satan anatutumia kwa ajili ya manufaa yake mwenyewe satan enslaves ya satan anafanya watu wako watumwa by eventually what happens lakini hatimaye ni nini unafanyika he has to abandon them and they become hopeless hatimaye satan anawaacha wanakuwa watu ambao hawana matumaini yoyote ile that is the work of satan hiyo ni kazi ya ipilisi but something very 
thankful about. Lakini chambo la kushukuru sana ni. After Satan leaves us, then we could be able to meet with the servant of faith. Baada ya shetani kutuacha, tuliweza kukutana na mtumishi wa Mungu. And then you could listen to the true gospel. Na wakati huo tukawa tumesikiza injili. And then you could belong to David. Na kuanzia wakati huo tukamilikiwa na Daudi. Is David is Jesus. So Daudi ni kifuli cha Yesu. Now this is Egyptian is in the hands of David. So tunaangalia huyu uh, kijana amemilikiwa mikononi mwa Daudi. He's given food na amepewa chakula. He's given something to drink. Amepewa machi ya kunywa. And David, can you guide me? Can you read me? Na Daudi anamuomba, "Che, unaweza kuniongoza? Unaweza kunielekeza?" Amazing life started from this time onwards in his life. Na maisha mapya ulianza kuipuka kuanzia wakati huo. Actually when did we listen the gospel? Na wakati gani tulisikiza injili? When did Jesus become your hope? Ni wakati gani Yesu alifanyika kuwa tumaini lako? Could you pe- be connected to Jesus? Uliweza kuunganika na Yesu kwa njia ipi? When you were doing well? Che wakati ambao ulikuwa mashuhuri no that time ya sio wakati huo But when you became useless lakini wakati ambao ulikuwa ni bure when you became hopeless wakati ambao ulikuwa umeshindwa hauna matumaini when we got lost wakati ambao tulikuwa tumepotea then Jesus could find us na wakati wa Yesu alitupata for the bible says na maandiko yanena hivi uh, he came for the lost alikuja kwa ajili ya waliopotea and so i'm thankful So kwa hivyo nashukuru sana. It's a blessing for me to have gone through those difficulties. Ah ni baraka kwangu kuwa niliyapita mambo hai magumu. Because I was able to uh, receive the grace to belong to to Jesus. Kwa sababu kupitia jambo hilo niliweza kupokea neema ya kumilikiwa na Yesu. But now that Jesus has become our master and our Lord. Lakini sasa kwa sababu Yesu amekuwa uh, bwana katika maisha yetu. Whatever we go through and whatever difficulties we are faced with. Uh, so mambo yote ambayo tunapitia, hali zote ambayo tunapitia. I hope we can live the life to inquire. Ningetamani tuweze kuishi maisha ya ya kumuuliza yeye. And I hope we can live the life to receive the promise. Na ningetamani tuweze kuishi maisha ya kuweza kupokea ahadi ya Mungu. And out of this promise that we receive from him, na miongoni mwa ahadi hizi zote ambao tunazipokea, then he's able to work in our lives. Atakuwa na uweza wa kufanya kazi katika maisha yetu. Okay, thank you so much. Let's pray. Asanteni yeah, sana na tuombe. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace upon our lives. Baba, tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya upendo wako na neema yako juu ya maisha yetu. We thank you for the key that you've given to us. Ni asante kwa kifunguo ambao umetupatia. And the Bible says, Biblia inanena hivi. Whatever is loosed upon the earth is also loosed in heaven. Mambo yote ambayo yatafunguliwa hapa duniani yatafunguliwa na hata mbinguni. If the sense that I hear today have got matters that are bound in their hearts. Hawa watakatifu walio hapa leo wako na mambo mengi ambayo yamefungika ndani ya mioyo zao allow them to make these things to be loosed in their hearts ukawaruhusu mambo kama haya yafunguliwe ndani ya mioyo zao for when it is loosed on the earth it's also loosed in heaven ni kwa sababu wakati ambao yamefunguliwa ndani ya mioyo yanafunguka hata na mbinguni it's not that you have the key we have the key ya siet ya kwamba hatuna siet ya kwamba huko na funguo tuko na ufunguo father i'm praying continuously baba mungu naomba kuendelea that i will step forward for the sake of preaching this precious gospel ya kwamba tunapopiga hatua ya kuhubiri injili you open doors in front of us ukatufungulie milango mbele zetu and allow us to believe in you precisely ukaturuhusu tuweze kukuamini kwa njia uliyomwafaka and once the promise of god is steadfast and believed in our hearts na wakati hadi ya mungu umeweza kusimamisha kwa njia uliyomwafaka ndani ya mioyo zetu we believe there will be abundant works of the gospel even through Kenya Church. Waamini kwamba kutakuwa na kazi tele ya injili ndani ya kanisa. And through our lives individually. Na kupitia maisha yetu uh, uh, kila mmoja wetu binafsi. Father God we thank you. Baba wetu tumekushukuru. Though we were lost we were found by you. Ngawache tulikuwa tumepotea lakini tulipatikana na wewe. Though we were blind now our eyes are opened. Ngawache tulikuwa watu vipofu lakini macho yetu yamefunguliwa. Though we were hopeless you became our hope. Ngawache tulikuwa watu ambao hatukuwa na matumaini lakini umetupatia matumaini. So Father God we thank you. So kwa hivyo baba tumekushukuru. We be glorified we prayed believing in Jesus ukatukuzwe tunaomba yote kwa china la Yesu Kristo amen okay thank you so much asanteni sana we'll stand up
happened uh, since